playing low boards with the preflop razor. And so um, a lot of my uh, webinar topics come from when I'm doing coaching sessions with students, um, kind of learn what kind of common mistakes um, that I hear that people are having or verbiage that I see people um, use that I'm not a fan of. This topic um, has come up a few times. Uh, a lot of people tend to struggle on playing low boards as the preflop razor. So thought it'd be good to talk about. Um, we're kind of have the same structure here. Go through a little PowerPoint presentation, talk about overall how we should be approaching these spots, what kind of framework and mindset we should have, how we should try to construct our strategies, and then we have a few examples that we're going to be looking into. So first, Playing low boards is the preflop razor. We will consider nine high and lower boards as low boards. Um, I'm just kind of using that as an arbitrary spot, so no Broadway cards. Um, we're going to look at the extremes today. So we're going to look at when we're the button and when we're under the gun. And we're only going to focus really today on versus big blind, since it gets slightly different when we're versus other players, but the framework kind of stays the same. Um, look at some aggregate reports, like I said, and some examples. Um, first one, first question. I am going to ask 843 rainbow. We raise the button, the big blind calls 843 rainbow. Who is this board better for? Who has the equity and who has the net advantage? All right, there's a specific reason that I wanted to pick this board or I'll pick ask this question because there's a verbiage that gets thrown around and to be completely honest, it really annoys me. <laughs> it like lights a fuse under my head. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna correct that verbiage today. So low boards. The the following boards are the only boards out of all whatever however many flops where the big blind has an equity advantage. Button versus big blind. Six five four rainbow. Six five four with a flush draw. Six four three rainbow. 653 rainbow and 643 with a flush draw. And these are the corresponding equities that the big blind has 51%, 50.8%, and 50.1%. There are essentially no boards where the big blind has the range advantage. These are the only, there are only boards that the big blind has less of a disadvantage to others. So on 843 rainbow, what advantage does the big blind have? Well, they can have sets, but can we have sets on the button? So let's talk about sets. Who can have, like, both players can have all the sets. However, who's going to have a set more often? It's probably pretty equal, or the button. The button has a tighter range. The button has, you know, 50% of hands. The big blind has 60 or 70% of hands. Uh, the button... The, Big blind might three bet some eight eight preflop, um, and so the the buttons either going to have more sets or slightly equal as a percentage of their overall range. Okay, eight four three rainbow. What about two pair? Maybe the big blind has eight four off. They don't have eight three off. They fold that preflop. They have four three off suit. But like they don't even have that many two pair combos. The big equity advantage. And the nut advantage is the under the button because we need to redefine what's the nuts. How do you guys define the nuts? What would you consider the nuts on this board? Eight four three rainbow. For me personally, I define the nuts as like a hand with like ninety plus percent equity. Okay, if we have ninety plus percent equity, we're pretty happy to get the money all in here on the flop. And on this type of a board, the nuts are going to kind of be like over pairs, right? Even some like maybe like ace eight over pairs, you know, obviously two pairs and sets fit into that, but those hands aren't very common. Over pairs are pretty common and they have a lot of equity on this board. Um, some characteristics of low boards. Um, so buttons, it's a kind of important. Remember we raise with, um, sorry, this is not wrong, like offsuit sevens and suited fours. Um, we have a lot of, this is how often we see that on different board textures. So this is an ace high board, king high board, queen high board, jack high board. You see where most of the check-in occurs is on like these low boards, seven high, six high, five high boards. Um, big drop from like a nine and a 10. So like nine high boards through like five high boards are where we're checking the much. Why do we check? We have a lot of air. We have all the jack 10 offs, the 
Queen eight offs. We have all this offsuit junk hands that miss on these low boards. So we have a higher checking percentage. Um, for example, here an eight high board plays a plays roughly like a 40% check. This this one is slightly different because it uses smaller bet sizings, allows them to bet more. Somewhere around a 40% check where on average we would be betting about 75% of flops and checking 25 um, across all flops. So we're checking more often, as you can see here, on these eight, seven, six, and five high boards. So the low boards. So how we kind of want to start to talk about um, these low boards and how we want to kind of group them together because there's a lot of different types of low boards all right so the first way i like to look at these low boards is connected versus disconnected okay is there a straight possible or is there no straight possible um that's kind of the first way i like to look at these types of board textures second here um so for example if there is a, can, on a connected boards, wherever there's a straight possible, so 7, 4, 3, 6, 5, 4, any of the connected boards, by connected I mean a straight possible, we're not going to be really using the small bet sizings a lot. No, like really of the bet 20% of the pot or bet 30% of the spot. We're going to be using more of a higher check. We're betting like half pot or even sometimes 80% of the pot. But the key thing on these connected boards is no overbetting. Okay. Whenever there's a straight on the board, we're not going to be over betting or using anything like larger than pot size bet. Okay. Medium. And the reason we kind of want to use these bets, these medium and large bets is we still have a lot of hands that have, um, are strong now, but still need a lot of protection. So by betting medium or large, we can begin to force out hands suited Broadway hands like queen jack suited, king jack suited, jack 10 suited, king jack off suit. We can also get some, um, I'm referencing this 874 rainbow board. I should put this up here. So um, on like 874 rainbow, when we bet medium to large, we can start to force out hands like queen jack suited, um, king queen offsuit, king jack offsuit, ace, you know, some ace high hands, getting overcard hands to fold. Um, when we have like pocket nines, ace eight, king eight, that's like a pretty big advantage for us. Um, we can also start to get some 5x to fold, some 6x to fold. Um, so essentially, these medium to large bets are to get value from like a pair of 8s, a pair of 7s, a pair of 4s, um, some gut shots. But it's also to deny a lot of equity to overcard hands that if we bet small, we can allow those hands with two overcards and backdoor flush draws to peel quite effectively. And I'm going to show you this visually here in a second instead of me just talking about it. So unlike a board like this where there's a straight possible like 874 rainbow, our value is going to be like our strongest top pairs and over pairs. Um, obviously like some two pairs, some sets. Um, our bluffs are going to be our overcard hands with some backdoor straight draws and potentially backdoor flush draws. So this is a button versus big blind. 40 big blinds, the flop is 874, and we're just gonna focus here on the button strategy here. And as you can see, we're checking a lot, 54%, which is not that surprising here. It's a low board with a straight possible. Um, and we just have all this air, like king jack offsuit, queen jack offsuit. We have too many hands that miss to just bet everything. I think everyone understands at this point that we need to be checking some on this board. We can't just bet 100% of the time. Now. How do we want to, you know, um, I don't want to use the word balance, but um, choose what hands we kind of want to bet for value first. Let's focus on the value range first. And I like to look at this arrow. And if you look at the arrow here, what are the key hands that are betting for value a lot here? It's this arrow of like a pair of eights right here. So here's the suited eights, all betting. And then here's the offsuit eights. And then the over pairs. So this is kind of nice arrow here of hands that are just, go ahead and frankly, just blasting away for value. Um, if we look at the sizings here, here's B30, which is 30% of the pot. Very important to note here, is this sizing ever used? We ever bet small here on this 874 rainbow? Basically, no. We're using this medium size, 65%, um, so like a two thirds pot bet and even a pot size bet even though the straight is possible we're still using a pot size bet um, a decent amount 
So we're using this medium to large size, but never the over bet, which is bet 150 here. And the value range, pretty easy here. So let's look at a pair of eights first. And the key difference here is that you notice that some of these weaker offsuit eights are checking back. So like ace eight and king eight offsuit still bet, but like you have queen eight off, jack eight off, 10 eight off, nine eight off. These hands mostly checking, but look at their suited counterparts when they have a backdoor flush draw. The suited eights with a backdoor flush draw are betting. So the eight X block here with a back suit, like with a backdoor flush draw is just enough equity now to bet some of these weaker, like jack eight suited, 10 eight suited, nine eight suited. But these weaker eights without a backdoor flush draw, we can just go ahead and check those. You know, sometimes you bet them, but those are like the, the top pairs that you want to check. You never want to check the ace eight and the king eight because you want to just maximize value against queen eight, 10 eight, like worst, worst pairs of eights. Um, and then obviously you have the over pairs. Pair of nines, pair of tens, jacks, queens, aces, never checking these types of hands. Okay, so we have the top pair. And then look at the pair of sevens. Pretty easy, right? It's like a seven kind of betting. A7 betting. Then we just check with our middling pair of sevens. Um, pair of fours is always checking. It's pretty much our value range here. Like pocket eights is checking sometimes since we block the top pairs. Um, sevens and fours are betting to get maximum value from an eight. Um, never checking with like a straight. You don't have to do any crazy like eight sevens never checking. Um, none of these like crazy like checkbacks to like balance per se. It's, it's just we're taking our best hands here, our strong top pairs, and betting them, you know, that value part is easy. Um, now, why do we want to bet medium to large and not small? Well, I mentioned we want to fold out hands with two overcards for like, let's say we have nine eight suited or we have pocket nines. Let's say we bet small. If I select the bet 30, Look at these hands like queen jack suited, king jack suited, king 10 suited, queen 10 suited, king nine, queen nine, jack nine suited. I mean, that's a gut shot. That's not going to fold. Queen 10 suited, ace nine, ace 10 off. All these overcard hands that get a call. Plus, look at all the 6x hands and the 5x hands. They're never folding to a small bet with a gut shot. However, if we start to ramp up the bet size and we let's say we bet two thirds pot now. Now you can see this whole block over here is cleared out. All these two overcard hands with with offsuit two overcard king jack queen these hands are all gone when you have pocket nines that's really good for you you get maximum value from a pair of eights a pair of sevens um, a pair of fours you get maximum value with a pair of nines against those hands and you get maximum protection against the overcards here's queen jack suited folding now queen 10 suited queen nine suited all these hands folding now um, that's really nice for you you start to get you know king five queen five king five jack six to fold that's Pretty nice when you have a pair of nines, two hands, two cards to come that you get an overcard and a gut shot to fold. Queen six, king six. You know, honestly, like people are probably folding more of these hands than they should be. And it just gets even more intense if you bet full pot here. Betting full pot, you just, you fold out so many of these gut shots now. Um, and you even start to fold out a pair of fours now sometimes. So the, the point of the big bet here is you want to maximize value so pocket nines is the perfect example here. You maximize value when they have a pair of eights and you also maximize your protection from overcard hands that would call potentially to a smaller bet. This is very important. And notice hands like, and we're gonna talk about checking um, in a slide later on, um, pocket sixes, pocket fives checking. Notice our six X and five X checking back hands like nine, six, nine, five, ace, six, ace, five. Some of these gut shots checking back. Um, on the flop here. Um, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit here. Ace-Ace does need less protection. The reason Ace-Ace can still bet large though is because Ace-High is folding mostly on this flop anyways. Um, Ace-High is going to like, if we bet small, like they're still folding some Ace-Highs or like, um, we're not, I, I guess we're, there's still enough Ace-Highs that are going to call even if we bet medium because of the gut shots. That's what's going on. Uh, but yeah, in general, I would normally bet smaller, but I would just have one size here and bet like two thirds pot or something like that. Or you could bet probably like just two thirds would be 75%, something like that. You could just get away with one size in here. It's going to be just fine. So connected versus disconnected. 
So on connected boards, we don't really use a lot of small sizing, mostly in medium to large sizing. But the key thing is no overbedding, strong top pairs, over pairs. And um, now in terms of bluffs, what do you notice? Like the bluffs here, we're not bluffing with our highest high card hands like king, queen. But look at king, nine. Look at queen, 10, queen, nine. If you see this relationship here between king, nine, king, 10, and king, jack, and king, queen. I like to use this relationship here a lot. King nine bets the most. King queen never bets. So yeah, king nine has a little bit more connectivity. Has three to a straight. And then, but the, the, the reason I like to like that a lot of people point out is like king nine can fold out king 10. King, king nine can fold out king jack. Um, when we bet large, let's say we bet 65 here. We don't want. If we have king nine, we want to fold out king 10, king jack, and king queen. We want our opponent to fold those hands because they dominate us. We want our opponent to fold king 10. We want them to fold king jack. We want them to fold king queen. What about when we have king queen? Do we want king jack to fold? Do we want king 10 to fold? Do we want king nine to fold? Do we want king five to fold? King three, king deuce. We want those hands to stay in the pot. Because we want to check back with king queen, hope the turn is a king, and now we get two large streets of value against king jack, against king 10, against king 9, against king 6. We get value from those hands that would have just folded on the flop. We want to fold, when you're bluffing, you want to fold out hands that dominate you. And then you want to check back with hands that keep in uh, the dominated hands ourselves. So that's why king queen is checking to keep in these other king high hands. Um, you see the same thing here. Queen nine suited betting a lot. Queen nine suited is betting. And then you got queen 10 checking. Queen jack, you know, is checking the most. So a lot of the hands that are bluffing are like 10, nine, jack, nine, jack, 10, queen 10 are weakest overcard hands. Um, you know, jack nine suited, jack 10 suited to fold out, you know, king jack, queen 10. For the same reason we want to fold those hands for protection, we bluff with the hands that can get those dominated hands to fold. All right, so our weakest overcard hands are kind of the ones we want to bluff with. Two overcards, when they call, they're going to have like a pair of sevens, a pair of eights. We're going to have two overcards. And when we hit one of them, we can kind of value bet now because we are clearing up our equity. If we, if we bet here with queen 10, if we bet here with queen 10, and then our opponent calls and it turns a queen, well, we can happily value bet again now with a pair of queens because we're not worried about them really having king queen anymore or queen jack anymore because we folded those hands out on the flop if we bet small those hands might call the flop and now we're not as happy to value bet with queen 10 on the turn so it's a little bit on bluffing we'll get into that in a little bit later especially in some examples but let's look at a non-connected board so we looked at connected when there was a straight let's look at eight high eight five deuce rainbow okay what do we think is the preferred bet size on eight five deuce rainbow 30%, 65%, 100%, or 150%. So I'm going to guess it's either 100% or maybe like there will be some 150%. This sim was ran at 40 big blinds. If we were at 100 big blinds, if we were at 100 big blinds, for sure it would be 150% or even 200% of the pot maybe. But at, um, at um 40 big blinds we don't necessarily need to go 150 percent like maybe it's 125 percent or maybe it's just 100 percent because that makes the pot big enough um these when i say like big bets it's kind of relative to the stack size the stack to pot ratio um i just use uh so in my sim i can't run every single size it's just like 30 65 100 150. so um on these low connected boards we're kind of using a check or over bet strategy and what allows us to overbet now is because there's no presence of a straight. We're not worried about tightening up their range too much to strong gut shots or like pair plus gut shot. Because there's no straight available, we can actually bet bigger. And people get this wrong because they're scared of the straight draw. They want to protect their hand. They don't want that four straight to come in. It's actually the opposite. You want to bet really big when your pocket kings can bet multiple streets across various runouts. So we're going to be using a check or overbet strategy. 
And you want to maximize value versus the pairs. For the same reason before, when you have pocket nines, you want to maximize your value against a pair of eights. The big blind doesn't have tens, jacks, queens, kings, or aces. You want to maximize your value. And if we look here, you see here, not even using the B65, there's a little bit of B30, mainly built around like pocket aces. So before someone mentioned like not betting big with aces because it doesn't need much protection. But, um, and you don't see B150 being used, but there, you likely could, probably could use a size between 100 and 150, but I would just bet pot here. But like, say we weren't 40 big blinds, we we're 80 big blinds. I bet 150 would be the primarily the size used. So on 853 rainbow, we see the same arrow, eights and the pairs. The biggest difference in value now is if we notice now like a hand like Jack-8 offsuit, Jack-8 offsuit was doing a lot of checking on the um, eight, what was it? Eight, um, what was the last board we were looking at with the straight? Eight, seven, four. On eight, seven, four, Jack-8 was checking a lot. Jack eight was checking a lot because Jack eight doesn't have as much equity on eight seven four because of the 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 straight and there's a ton of gut shots that have a lot of equity. But on eight five three, there's no straight, so Jack eight offsuit has more equity. So you can see here, Jack eight offsuit's not checking. Now it's like just like ten eight and nine eight. So we're just kind of blasting away with our pair of eights, um, and then our over pairs. We're just betting full pot, blasting away, still checking a lot. Bluffing with hands like 10-9 suited, jack-10 suited, jack-9 suited. It's like very clean, right? It's a very clean strategy on this type of board. Checking with our pocket sevens, pocket sixes, um, a little bit of small betting with the sets. That's where this 30% comes in. It's betting with like the sets really small. But um, I don't really think that's kind of necessary to say. Even betting big with a hand like ace-5. Um, but again, you just see this arrow, it's very consistent and then bluffing with the weakest overcard hands. How do we adjust on turns that are good for the big blind when we pot it more? So like basically turns where you can keep betting with your over pairs are going to be really good for you. And overcard turns are going to be really good. Like the, um, we're, we're kind of looking at the flops here, the turns, like, let's say you over bet here, or let's say you bet a hundred and they call, what do they have? Like a pair of eights, a pair of fives, a pair of threes and some straight draws. Even when the turn is like a six per se, like it fills a straight, you're still just kind of YOLO, don't care. You just kind of blast away here with all those same value hands. Ace eight, like you see here, like on a six here, you just keep blasting away here with your pair of eights. Keep blasting away with the over pairs. Good, why? Go, like, unless they turn two pair, or whatever, your goal is kind of the same still. You just want to maximize value against weaker hands. Um, and then like, let's say the turn is like, jack of hearts this one's really cool because now you get a blast away with still the pair of eights why well they don't have a jack they folded a jack on the flop because you bet big so not only now do you get a bet with a pair of eights look at how much we check on this board on this jack we never check we bet with our over pairs we still bet with pocket tens and pocket nines why well they don't have a jack unless they have jack eight jack five jack three ace jack and then we still get a bet with jack nine jack ten and then we start bluffing with like queen 10, queen 9, jack 9. We just get bet with everything. And, and this is how you steal EV away from the big blind. Like they still have to call you with like a pair of fives. You've gone like bet, bet huge. And like just because the big blind just doesn't have anything, they still have to call really light because they have nothing else to call with. They just have like weak pairs. And this is how you want to be playing against the big blind on these types of boards. This is how you, you really boost your win rates. So we're playing this massive like kind of check or not over bet but like pot size bet if we were like really deep yeah i mean you can kind of see it here where this is like 125 percent 30 80 120 like it's only using the 120 here at 60 big blinds um doesn't even want to use 80 percent. it just wants to like the deeper you get you just it's the same strategy you just ramp up the bet sizing even more the deeper you get like I've done it live and I get crazy looks like I bet two X pot on these types of flops. And it's, it's really fun. The looks you get from people and it's a very high EV strategy. Um, so let's keep going along. So non-connected boards. Um, so the next like way we're going to differentiate these low boards is suited versus non-suited. Okay. Flops with a flush draw. We never want to over bet. Why? With a flush draw, why do we never want to overbet with there's so a flush draw on the flop versus with if it's a rainbow board we can overbet it's kind of the opposite i think that a lot of people 
the basic way I like to explain it, so take like 853 with two diamonds. If you start over betting on 853, 853 diamond diamond, you're going to start to run into too many combo draws. So you're going to start to run into too many 9-7 of diamonds, 7-4 uh, of diamonds, 6-4 of diamonds, ace four diamonds, ace eight deuce of diamonds, uh, pair plus diamonds. You're going to run into way too many combo draws that have way too much equity against your pocket tens, your pocket nines, your pocket jacks, the hands that want to overbet. And the bigger you bet, the more often they're going to show up with those hands because they fold more often. So the you don't want to narrow their range too much to these combo draws when there's a flush draw possible. So when it's a rainbow board, when it's eight five three rainbow, your 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 pocket tens, your pocket nines, your pocket jacks have more equity because there's not those combo draws. So therefore, you're allowed to start to you know you should start ramping up over betting with those types of hands um, to force more money into the pot with a pair of eights right now. And that's um, kind of the it's it's you don't want to narrow their range to those combo draws and strong ace high flush draws enough because you're flipping with those hands when you have pocket jacks right you don't want to be building the pot against a hand that you're flipping against you want to be building the pot against a hand that you have 80 plus percent equity against does that make sense this is pretty important and this is probably new to a lot of people a lot of people think flush draw bet really big i'm scared i want to you know charge them well in reality all you're doing is it you're making it more likely they have the flush draw because the bigger you bet the more often they'll fold which is just basic math. And the more often they fold, the more often they're gonna have that flush draw. And the more often they're gonna have the really strong combo type of flush draws. When there is a flush draw on the flop, so let's start with this. Rule one, bigger you bet, the more your opponent gets to fold, right? Smaller you bet, the more they call, okay? Basic math right here, okay? So when when on eight five three on this board with two diamonds, okay, they're never folding a flush draw. Okay? Unless you bet like all in or something. So they're never folding a flush draw on this flop, right? So the bigger you bet, the more they fold, and the more it narrows their range it to flush draws. So you're actually doing the opposite of what you want. You're, you're making the range more likely that they have those flush draws. And I'm really focusing on like the combo draws, like nine, seven of diamonds, seven, six of diamonds, six, four of diamonds, ace, four of diamonds, ace, deuce of diamonds, uh, a pair of threes with diamonds. All these hands have 50 plus percent equity against your pocket tens or jacks, which are the hands you want to bet really big with anyways, right? So you're just narrowing their range more to the hands that you're flipping against. Versus on 853 rainbow, you're narrowing, you're not concerned about narrowing, they don't have any hands that are going to have 50% equity as a draw on 853 rainbow. Hopefully that clears it up. Another thing on these um, low boards, number of straights possible, okay? Excuse my lazy writing. Um, they don't pay me for grammatical <laughs> prettiness. Uh, so, uh, 654 flop versus a seven, four, three flop. So on like six, five, four flop, we're gonna be probably using smaller sizes, like maybe 50% of the pot. Um, we're gonna be more passive with our biggest over pairs that don't need protection on six, five, four um, on these flops. The reason is, is there's 16 combos of seven, eight, there's 16 combos of seven, three, and there's 16 combos of three deuce. There's a lot of different straights possible on this board. Versus on seven, four, three, rainbow it kind of plays closer to the seven four deuce right because it's really only one combo of straight the five six that we're worried about and we still have five six suited in our range so it's really just the 12 combos of five six offsuit that we're worried about and it plays a little bit more like seven four deuce because of there's only one combo on the board our bluff still the two over card type of hands yeah so like ten eight you know, 10, nine, those types of hands. So I think I ran both these. So like, for example, on eight, seven, four, there's only one straight possible, right? And you can see where we, we could still bet 100% of the pot, even though it's because there's only one straight possible. 
But if I change it to so 654 with a flush draw, so there's lots of straights possible here, right? And you can see how passive, like now we don't bet 100% of the pot. Now you even see small betting start to creep in, uh, a lot of check, only using medium bet. And you can see we're a lot more passive now with these like pair of aces, pair of kings, pair of queens, the over pairs that don't need protection. We're a little more cautious with here because it's such a dangerous board. There's a big difference between this board and 874 because of how many straights are possible on this board. You could see here even um, uh, like king six off checking. Um, 10 6, you know, Jack 6, playing a lot more passive and conservative on this type of a board versus whenever there's just one straight possible. Um, how to protect the check back range. Okay, so we've been talking about betting, right? Well, we're checking half the time as well. So I don't like to think of balance or protecting your check, check back range. Um, I don't like that word. Um, one thing I'm worried about is like people can worry about capping themselves when they check back. Well, don't they know I don't ever have a strong hand then? Don't worry about capping yourself on the turn, on the flop, because the turn can uncap you. So check back a variety of hands that can turn strong draws or strong hands. For example, checking back with backdoor flush draws that can turn a really strong uh, flush draw on the turn. Weak gut shots, weak open-ended straight draws, overcard hands. Um, check back hands that connect well with cards that are good when, it, when they hit the big blinds range. So let me, like, this will be easier. So we're going to focus here on the types of hands that we want to check back here. So we're checking, you know, 40% of the time, checking quite a lot. And types of hands that we want to check here. And actually, let's go to the range. Yeah, we'll look at it different here. So first off, Cards that are going to be in generally be good for the big blind on the turn are going to be low cards or high cards. Like generally, like low cards are going to be better for high cards. So we're going to check back, like we're going to cover ourselves kind of not on the turn, not by checking back really strong hands to trap them. We're going to cover ourselves by checking back hands that can turn strong hands on a variety of cards. So for example, um, ace five offsuit, okay? I'm going to guess the ace five offsuit checks back here a lot. And you see that ace five offsuit, I said that without looking here, checks back a ton because cards like a deuce, cards like a six, cards like a seven are going to be generally pretty good for the big blind that they're going to be betting a lot on for like protection and value. And like, it's pretty nice having a hand like ace five checking back because those are cards that they might start bluffing a lot on. And now you have a pretty strong hand to check back with and it's pretty disguised. Like we're, we're covering ourselves on like a deuce on a pair of five, on a five, we'll have a pair of fives. Ace five will be a really strong hand there. Um, kind of covering ourselves there. You see ace deuce doing the same thing. Now on the five, we have the straight. Um, another hand to check back here. You see six, five suited checking back. Set of eights checking back sometimes. That's more so just like, yeah, it's kind of for the check bet. It's more has to do with that. We just block the hands that are going to call our big bet. Um, it's not checking back because of, oh, we want to have a strong hand to check back. It's checking back really because we block the hands that are going to call our big bet. It's more likely they have an eight rather than a four or three. Um, just because of how they call our raise preflop. Um, you see a hand like 6-5. This is a hand that almost everyone is c betting in this spot. It's kind of a nice hand when we're checking back a lot of high card hands, checking back the 6-5 on the 7, on the deuce. Now we have like a really strong hand on those cards. On a pair, on a 6 or a 5, we can hit, you know, it's a pretty strong hand. You see 7-6 checking back here, 7-5, all these like gut shots checking back. Then you have like the 4-X and the 3-X, so if it's a paired, like if it's a four on the turn or a three on the turn, we're covered there. Um, you know, we have pocket sevens and pocket sixes for the same reason. These low cards, we can turn sets. Um, and then if the, it turns a high card, like a king, queen, jack, or 10, like we have king, queen, we have king, jack, we have king, 10, um, ace, 10. You know, on an ace, obviously, we can have some of the ace X hands. Like we're checking back hands. Um, like here is like another one, like king, seven suited. Doesn't seem like it has a lot going on. Like, so, so this is kind of the key thing. You see king seven offsuit is betting. King seven offsuit bets because it doesn't really have any incentive to check back. It can't really turn a strong hand, right? It just can turn a gut shot with king seven offsuit. 
versus king seven suited and king six suited and king five suited. You see that they're checking back a lot. Like look at king five. This is a perfect example. King five of hearts versus king five of diamonds. Why is king five of hearts always betting and king five of diamonds is checking? Yeah, so it's like it has to do with the EV of checking. The EV of checking back, the expected value of checking back with king five of diamonds is pretty high because there's a lot of really good turn cards, right? You can turn the combo draw with like the deuce of diamonds, the six of diamonds, the seven of diamonds. You know, you can turn like... Um, a lot of strong hands with king five, king six, king seven of diamonds, um, a seven of diamonds, a six of diamonds versus like the king five of hearts. You just want to use this hand as a bluff. Like I like what someone says, it just has no hope. So bluff it because there's not a lot of value in checking it back. Right. So like we have plenty of bluffs with these. We'd rather bluff with these like overcard type of hands. Um, and as you can see here, we're just, we're checking back with hands that can, um, connect on a wide variety of turn cards. So the, the goal is not to check back strong hands to kind of trap your opponent. The goal is to check back hands that can turn strong hands on the turn. So you protect your you protect your turn range by checking back the right type of hands, not checking back really strong hands. Like that's really important. Does that make sense? Like for me and myself, I'm probably betting like I can tell you right now I'm betting way too much with king six of diamonds here. I bet way too much with king six of spades because I go, oh, this is a great hand because I can bluff on the five of spades. I can bluff. There's so many great turn cards for me to bluff. Well, this is true, but also I want to be, I'm checking a lot on this flop because I miss and I have plenty of other bluffs of weaker value. So like I'm betting too much with these types of hands myself. So it's kind of nice to see that, that we can be checking back. We have a bigger equity advantage and also we show up with over pairs way more. So therefore, we can bluff a lot more. So if we look at a board like um, wait, eight four deuce with a flush draw, uh, this sim doesn't have over bets. So keep in mind here, the largest bet I have allowed here is two thirds pot. Um, so it would bet bigger, likely, if I not. But you can see here now on eight four deuce, we're only checking twenty four percent of the time, whereas before we were checking forty or fifty percent of the time, and we're just really not having to check more because we show up with an overpair so often. People think this is a good board for the big blind. No, it's not. We have an overpair 20% of the time on this board. Like, it's pretty crazy. Like, we have top pair or better 21% of the time here. So, like, because we show up with an overpair so often, we can bet more often. Uh, let's see if I have a, like, uh, you know, like, 7-3 deuce rainbow. Like... Like, we just get to bet everything here because now we have a pair of eights, pair of nines. Like, we just show up with over pairs way too often here. And it's not much the big blind can do about it. And we just really just kind of pound away at them. Underground has less air. The over pair advantage is magnified. And so more betting and more big sizings. Let's look at a few examples that I ran um, in Poker Tracker. And then we'll wrap it up. Uh, if you guys want to screenshot this, this is the filter I ran. So I did a uh, seabed opportunity. I took away, there was, I said there was no Broadway cards. We raced first in and that we're in position. So you can look at the replay or take a screenshot of this really quick if you would like it. And let's look at the button here. And all right, we have a few hands we're going to look at here. All right, so this is a hand from last night that I played. You don't overfold. You just kind of like, this is the point. You, you just kind of have to call with like your pairs and stuff. I don't really want to get into the big blind strategy, but it's really pretty simple. Like the big blind's job gets easier the bigger you bet. Because then you just kind of call with like your straight draws and your pairs, right? <laughs> so it's like either you overfold and get crushed or you kind of have to call down with some weak hands. Um, so in this hand, um, I've been running a lot more of these like, awkward stack size spots and stuff that you can't really just run in like a, uh, you know, on a, like a web-based solver and stuff where they just have equal stacks. So I, this is a fun hand. So we're going to, we're going to have a little quiz here. Okay. So I have 10, nine off here, 15 big blinds on the button. First off, do you guys, is anyone not raising this? Is anyone folding this? What are you guys doing here? We have 15. There's a 20 big blind stack, a 50 big blind stack. So I raise and the big blind calls. And we get this flop. And all right, so the pot's 5.45. There, 
So the question here is, so here are your options. You can one, bet 25% of the pot. You can bet 50% of the pot. You can bet 100% of the pot, or you can go all in for 200% of the pot, or we can check, okay? And I'll do this. I haven't looked at the solve yet. So I don't know, but I went with this answer. So why am I doing this? Why am I shoving here? One, um, I don't really want to bet and then have to fold this hand. That's number one. Don't want to have to bet and then fold this hand. So like bet calling is, per, is, is an option. The other thing is I want to maximize fold equity. I don't want to like bet here and then let like Jack 10 of diamonds peel or Jack 10 of diamonds shove. Like I want to fold out King 10, Queen 10, Jack 10, you know, Jack 9 uh, type of hands here. Um, number two, the big blind really just has like a pair or nothing, right? Like I can deny quite a bit of equity here with my 10, nine and against whatever they call with, like I'm doing pretty well, right? So like, I'll show you what happened here. Cause it kind of just shows the point. Like this player has ace three, um, probably is semi closest. I'm not sure here. Um, it's interesting here. I don't know what I would do with ace three. I'd probably fold ace three, to be honest. I think ace three is a fold because when they run it, I have a lot of hands like this. Um, I can fold out some pairs and like, I just have a ton of equity against anything that calls me. So I think this is the right play. I'm not 100% sure, but it's the same kind of logic of what we've been looking at, right? Like it's a rainbow disconnected board. I'm gonna use really big sizings. The thing here is, is like any really big sizing, like betting five here when I have 12 big blinds really doesn't make a lot of sense here. So like I kind of converted everything here to like, I think we could have an all-in range and we probably have some other bet sizing as well. Question here, what would you guys do if you had six, five of diamonds? I don't think small bets horrible at this stack up. There's probably some small bets. I'm not sure. Like ace queen, maybe we can look at that. What would you guys do with six, five diamonds on this board? Same questions. B 25, B 50, B 100, bet B 200 or check. So I just check. A lot of you guys are shoving with six, five. Now the problem with six, five is you shove and you get called by a pair of eights. How are you doing in that spot? Not very good. So like um, other hands I might shove here would be like Jack nine of clubs, Jack 10 of clubs. What do you guys want to do with seven, five? Say you had seven, five of spades that you raised preflop. I'd probably fold it preflop, but let's just say. Good, I'd probably check with seven, five. I I, you guys are starting to kind of understand the logic here. Um, let's go to the next hand. Okay, H4 off, we raise, big blind calls, 20 big blinds. This flop, what do you guys want to do? Okay, seems like a good idea. I would check, good. Seems like a lot of you want to check. I would check, this is one of those kind of hands that like um, sucks to get check raised off of. I can check back and it gives me some good board coverage on like a on a four, on a five, um, allows me to hit some really, really, really strong hands on those boards. And they're probably cards that I can start to induce a lot of bluffs from this opponent. Um, this board's a little different because it's a three in the deuce, which are so like, it's not like ace four, three or ace five, three, like because it's ace eight, three deuce, like we could probably start betting small for value with like ace queen or ace king. But I think still here, like a hand like pocket nines probably wants to bet pretty big. Um, an eight wants to bet pretty big. Yeah. Eight, uh, eight, four deuce. Yeah. I ran it here. I had eight, four deuce. That's why I just didn't run it because I had eight, four deuce. So, um, we're looking at eight, four deuce instead of eight, three deuce. So our hand's going to be like eight, three, for example, here. And you can see a lot of like, so in this 20 big blinds, I ran it with like, you can bet 25% of the pot or you can bet half pot. There might be some bigger bets allowed here, but we're only 20 big blinds effective here. You can even see all in starting to be somewhat used here for three X pot. So this kind of helps my, um, you know how on the last board I shoved for two X pot on with the 10, nine off, you can see here, like it's not used often, but uh, for this is 327 into hundred and you can see what hands do it. 
what hands like to shove for 323x pot? It's like pocket nines and pocket tens. So the hands that like need the most protection, like some, somewhat with some of these 8x hands. And then bluffing with like, here's 10-9 off a little bit, jack-10 off. But in general, we're using like half pot here. Um, so 8-4 deuce, so let's use ace-5 as our example. And you see ace-5 doing a lot of uh, checking here, especially without the spade. It looks like the ace of spades does bet more. I'm guessing because we don't get check raise as much. Here's the ace three and ace deuce. So these gut shots really like to check. I, if I look at a hand like five, six, I'm guessing five, six checks almost always. Here's five, six suited, seven, five suited. Again, these gut shots, these low gut shots that cover the low ends really like to check here. Um, I mentioned too, because it's such a low board with the four and the deuce or the three and the deuce, you could, you see some betting here with like ace queen for value, ace jack for value. Um, Ace 10 for value. Some of you're getting a little thin value bets here. Ace King always betting for value um, on this type of a board. So um, just to see what happens here, you know, check, check. Um, and now it's like, again, I can just check back. I still have a, like a gut shot. Ace high is probably good. Um, and then I could bet for some protection if you think this person's just completely going to overfold. Like betting here on the turn is probably fine. And I decided to just check it down. And like, for example, like this, I could have just gotten that hand to fold on the turn. So maybe a turn bet could have been good. But um, same principles. I really like my flop check here um, for those reasons. Uh, let's go to the next one. So uh, we can look at this, even though we don't have a sim. So we're 80 big blinds. Calls 975. So there's a straight on the board, but it's rainbow. Um, there's only one straight possible. So I probably could go bigger than here. I probably could bet like six big blinds i could probably bet like pot here and be probably i'd probably prefer to bet pot now this gut shot's a little different because i have an over card to the nine if i had like six four i prefer checking or if i had like um you know maybe just like a six or something maybe i check that um a little bit of a weaker without the over card i'd maybe use it more as a check but i think i should be betting bigger here i think this is a little too small for half pot because rainbow this is probably more appropriate size if it was nine seven five two tone turns a five and i go ahead and blast again um there they call i would still be betting my over pairs maybe betting ace nine um and the ace i'm not really worried about right because like i'm most of the aces highs are going to fold on the turn so um we have jack high here they probably just have like a pair of nines here pair of sevens um i go ahead and blast away at it and we generate a fold here. So it's like being really aggressive on these boards. Um, even, you know, the board paired here, like I don't think they have a five that much. So go ahead and went for it. Uh, let's go through one more really quick and we'll wrap it up. What do you guys want to do here? Bet small, bet big, check. So it's kind of tricky. We haven't really talked about this. This board is so low and disconnected. I'd probably bet small here for value with ace king and ace queen and maybe ace jack and then uh start checking more with like ace nine for example type of hand um i went and bet here for value called term is a nine doesn't really connect with them i went kind of for thin value again um this is a value bet here i'm not really bluffing um but trying to get called by like hands like king queen uh weaker aces uh deny some equity and got a fold, but this is kind of an interesting one to look at here. And just to, just kind of to show like how I think people are just too passive on these low boards, too too scared. Let's see here, six three deuce. We're gonna focus kind of on the overall. I'm not really concerned about having ace king or not. Hmm, interesting. Lots of leading from the big blind here. That's kind of cool, but we're not too worried about that. It makes some sense. There's a straight on the board. So we check and, you know, it's kind of a mix here of bet 50 and bet 25. Actually, some of this bet 87 coming in, though. But again, the hands like pair of sixes going crazy, over pairs going crazy. Um, and you can see here, like when I talk about the ace-x, like ace-king just always bets. And this is just for value. Ace-queen starting to bet a lot. And then like you're starting to check your ace-jacks, your ace-tens, your ace-nines, ace-eight, ace-seven. Like the middling aces is where you're checking a lot. Um the main reason is like when you bet, say, uh, even when you bet 50 here, you still get called by ace nine suited, ace 10 suited, ace eight suited, ace seven suited, ace four, ace five. You're getting value from your ace high. You get called by king queen, king jack, some, 
So getting value um, from your ace high here. Um, again, bluffing with like the 10 9 off, jack 9 off, these overcard, lower overcard hands here on 6 3 deuces where a lot of your bluffs come from. So, um, cool. 